कौन सा Honor and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachakodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, the Holy One of Israel, whom this world ignorantly calls God, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, whom this world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and peace and mercy to the house of David, those men that are doing His work in sincerity and in truth across the four corners of the earth who present their bodies as a living sacrifice going out to the highways and byways and uh much love to the 130 believers out there you men women and children that are listening learning and helping in all sincerity and humility to you all i say shalom and greetings and lord willing this lesson is edifying all right so uh jake had a video i did yesterday um and uh i didn't get an opportunity to uh upload it <laughs> because honestly i just didn't like how uh it, it might sound through but I didn't like how my voice sounded like it because I was like a little bit kind of tired. I was getting tired. And, you know, sometimes that happens, too, through the spirit. You know, the scriptures say prophesied to the wind. So sometimes we do lessons. I, I couldn't ima I can't imagine how many lessons I've done that don't never make it to make it on wax, that never make it to the air. You know, but at the end of the day, the Lord sees our sacrifice. So that's what matters. But uh, anyway, as you all just saw the clip that I put in the beginning of this lesson, Man, 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 Esau, Edom, right? With this man, right? This is the 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 devil on earth, right? This is the devil on earth, and you see the type of equipment that he's coming with. Like a guy was getting beat with the uh, that bat, the knife, and he was just standing there. Like it's basically like he wasn't phased at all. Like it wasn't penetrating at all. And those are all the type of weapons Jake could come up with. Like, yeah, Jake could be like, oh, I got that too. You know what I'm saying? But how those are penetrating those type of metals, I guarantee a lot of, uh, uh, don't, okay, a typical Teflon vest can, uh, how, what's the word I'm using? Uh, deflect bullets, right? Or they absorb them. And so you absorb the, the pressure, you know, so uh, you don't get hit directly with it. But those things, is, I guarantee, if they would have pulled a gun out on that, it would have bullets probably would have been bouncing off that dude's chest with certain weapons. You see, but this is why you're going to need uh, spiritual power. You're going to need Yahweh Bashem Al Shai. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and get that first. The scripture just came to my mind. I haven't pulled this one out in a minute, actually. This is uh, Isaiah chapter fifty-nine and verse nineteen. It says, "So shall they fear the name of the Lord Yahweh." from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. You see? And so that's the thing, man. The enemy is going to come in like a flood. Esau is coming in like a flood. Imagine, you know, 10 of those dudes busting down. That's a that's a flood, man. 10, ten guys dressed like that in that apparel busting down your door that's a that's a flood a flood the point of a flood is something that typically can't be stopped right you know you had a, a russian flood coming in your house you know and matter of fact in the uh in the nlt it says here for he will come like a raging flood tide you see what i'm saying so he will come like a raging flood tide so that's almost like a uh what are those things called um 
It's not tsunami. It's like a large crashing wave, almost, if you will. You see what I'm saying? And it's uh right the tide is high and then it comes in, it's crashing away. And if anybody that's been in ocean beach water, those uh the crashing waves, when you get closer to them, like you know, when you're when you get past the way the uh immediate the shoreline, once you get past the shoreline, the big waves will come, but you can like go under the water or over the water. But that shoreline, that crashing, that should have throw you around, push you around, you know. But it says that he's going to come in like a flood, right? So it's going to be overwhelming, you see. But the Lord said he shall, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And that that that, that standard that we're going to have is going to be ultimately that those spiritual powers that Yahweh Bashem Shah is going to give to his men. And Lord willing, Lord willing, we be of that number, man. All right. And you see the, uh, the word there for standard, it looks like nawas, right? It says to flee, escape, to take flight, to disappear, right? To drive hastily, to cause to disappear, hide, right? And so it says uh, in the Strongs, to vanish away, subside, uh, chase, impale, deliver. You see, so all of these are really different forms of spiritual power, right? To vanish away or escape, that's like inv invisibility, right? Uh, uh, to uh, chase, why would, it says... What's that verse? Hold on, let me get that real quick. Let me see if I can find it. You know, to chase. Why would why would why would men be running from you? You see? This is uh Leviticus 26 and 8. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemy shall fall before you by the sword. You see? So that that's gonna be due to spiritual power where you can Five men can chase a hundred men away, right? And it says what a hundred, uh, a hundred of you putting ten thousand people to flight. That's spiritual power to impale, right? Uh, uh, this might be a different impale. Actually, I'm thinking of impale like uh to uh put to stab ultimately. Let me see. Let me look up this definition. Impale. It says uh. To drive, force, or urge someone to do something. Drive forward. You see? It says to urge or drive forward or on by as if by the exertion of strong moral pleasure. Right? So, impale, we still, it's going to be the moral of the Lord at that point. Right? Deliver. So, the Lord is going to deliver us from the wicked. Okay? He's going to deliver us from, uh, it says, put the flight. <laughs> Put the flight, and we we just said that in Leviticus, right? It says, and a hundred of you. And so two of the key words in there are used in the same thing. It says, and five of you shall chase an hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. You see, that means they're gonna be running. That don't mean they're gonna take off flying. But another thing it also had in there was uh for uh flight or flee. It says to take flight, so brothers can fly. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord gonna lift up that standard. Because Esau is coming in with, let's be real, Esau is coming in with shit like this, man. You not No matter what you got, they're showing you no matter what weapon you have, it's not going to work. So you can be out here, you know, and, you know, Jake, Jake like a weapons of war, right? Jake do like that weaponry, right? Jake like uh, knives and swords and axes. You know, Jake like all of that. But what do you do? You see, that dude had... He showed you how sharp that big ass uh, uh, knife was. I was like, it wasn't a machete, but it was like a war blade. You see what I'm saying? He showed you how sharp it was, how he sliced that paper. Next thing he was hacking at that dude's arm. And the dude wasn't even budging. He was just budging to block it so it doesn't hit anything else. He hit his leg too at the end. And it made no effect. You see? what? This is why the Lord is going to put spiritual powers upon his men. Okay? Um, let me go ahead and get a couple more. I'm gonna go to the book of Psalms, you see, and this is where your faith is going to come in. You know, we always say, I said it a long time ago, faith is the, uh, is the physical, I mean, spiritual powers is the physical manifestation of faith, man. All right. So yeah, the Lord is going to have your faith come out through those powers. This is Psalms, uh, 110 and three. It says, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. 
and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. I'm going to read this in the NLT too. It says, when you go to war, your people will serve you willingly. You are arrayed in holy garments and your strength will be renewed each day like the morning dew. You see, that's, that's spiritual power, man. That's why I said they're going to be willing in that day. They're not going to so say they're going to serve you willingly. It's because they're going to see that power that's upon you. Of Esau coming around doing shit like that and Jake Jake hitting him all he, with all his might and Esau not budging and you hitting him with a sword or a bat or shooting him and you're realizing that that's not working. So what are you going to do, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? What are you going to do when your, when your enemy is, is, is uh, suiting up like this, man? Right, and they just showed you two relatively two pieces of armor, right? This is why we gotta put on that spiritual armor. They showed you a chest plate, right? It's like um like a Teflon vest. They showed you a vest and they showed you the part for his forearm and elbow and the, the, the leg thing. You see, so they didn't show you uh maybe what they could put on their hands, they didn't show you what uh what helmets they would have on so they're gonna have on all types of things and they might have neck equipment you're not you might not be able to damage you know usually in ancient times of war right they will have uh you will have weak spots where you could attack the enemy usually like the neck the uh under the armpit you know uh, maybe under the under the girdle like in the stomach region you know the Achilles, certain places that were meant for flexing, that that needed uh, more room to move, were your uh, were your target spots. But dealing with Esau, Edom, man, this dude, he trying to seal up all of that. He trying to make sure that you, you cannot attack him, you know. And for all of my uh, Lord of the Rings people, you know, this reminds me of uh, on Lord of the Rings. He had this. Uh, well, was that Lord of the Rings? Yeah, Lord of the Rings. They gave Frodo something called, uh, it's like a dragon's cloak. And basically, it was light as a feather, but when you put it on, it's strong as a dragon's uh, skin. So, like, you could pierce it with a sword and it would, it would do nothing. You see, that's ultimately the type of material, not material literally, but the uh, spirit that they have on when it comes to this thing. Esau... He is the sword, man. All right? He is the sword. Y'all got to understand, he has had that perfected. All right? Let me see. He has had that sword perfected, man. This is Psalm 17 and 13. And that's the thing. Y'all, brothers, you know, just how we see the kingdom and we see uh, spiritual powers vi visually in our head, just how you imagine how great, glorious those things are, that's how Esau imagines a gun. That's how Esau imagines a weaponry. That's how he get down. He that's like that 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 gets his rocks off, man. That that gets him going. Talking about that kind of stuff. You know, we get excited thinking about the kingdom. We get excited thinking about spiritual powers. We get excited thinking about Yahweh Shah. That's how uh Esau acts about carnality and weaponry, man. All right. It says he, Esau was a cunning hunter, man. Hey, man, that, that even though cunning goes into subtility, that's cunning, too. You see, you to go out in your face of your enemies and you the dude think he about to get into a, a knife fight or a bat fight or even a gun fight with you. And you you got that. You feeling Esau is feeling invincible coming through with that, man. All right. But this is Psalm 17 and 13. Um, Let me start up. This is Psalm 17 and uh, 9. It says, From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who can pass me about, they are enclosed in their own fat. With their lips, with their mouth, they speak proudly. You see? And that that's, you know, they don't always have to literally speak out of their mouth. That, that's them. That show, that was a show of force, what they just did in that video. Right? That's speaking proudly. It's like, yeah, let, I wish you niggas would try it. That's, that's really what that was. It says, they have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. You see what I'm saying? They they com compass us in our in our steps. They watching around us. They 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 track us where we go, right? They uh waiting for the opportunity to throw us down. 
All right. It says like as a lion that is greedy of his prey and as it were a young lion lurking in certain certain places. Right. A lion that is greedy of his prey. You see a lion. See, he knocked his food down and he's looking ready to devour it. You see. And a young lion lurking in secret places, waiting for the opportunity to attack. It says, arise, O Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. You see? So the Lord said, Lord, disappoint him. Because Esau, once he think his, his war, war, I mean, his, uh, his uh, agenda, war, war order, his new world order is going to come to pass. You see, but the, uh, King David's like, disappoint him, cast him down because he's expecting this thing to go full motion the way he sees fit because he thinks that he sits in the seat of the most high, right? But it says, deliver my soul from the wicked, right? And part of that deliverance is going to have to be through spiritual power. Of course, we ultimately look for the ultimate deliverance from Esau, Edom, the sword, which is through salvation, beginning beamed up, Lord willing, we those men on them chariots, man. But the Lord, uh, uh, we ask him to deliver us from Esau, Edom, because with this, what are the unbelievers going to do in that day? What are the Christians going to do in that day? What are the Muslims going to do in that day? What are the Buddhists going to do on that day? Right? What are they going to do? We're the only people talking about spiritual power. We're the only people talking about true faith and standing firm in what you believe and having a solid way of seeing how we're going to defend ourselves. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, right? What what are all these other uh false gods gonna do? And they're gonna do absolutely nothing. And everybody's gonna see that those those uh Hebrew Israelites, starting with the apostles of Great Millstone on down, they're gonna realize that they were speaking facts, they were speaking truth, and they were trying to show the world a way out. But it was we know that it's only meant for the elect of the nation of Israel. It ain't meant for everybody, man. Right now, let me go ahead and get uh some of the scriptures that was on that video, and I don't know who that brother is that posted it. I, it was shared, and I just wanted, I just the spirit compelled me to want to do a lesson on it. All right, this is Jeremiah thirty and five. For thus said the Lord Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling, and of fear, and and not of peace. Right, we, that's the time that we're coming into. It says, ask ye now and see whether a man doeth travail with child. Wherefore, do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. You see, men are going to be uh, grabbing their sides, grabbing their stomach, grabbing their legs. You see, because it's going to be a very terrible time. Like a woman in travail. When a woman in travail, she grabbing her stomach. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. Grabbing her, we're grabbing her legs. I don't know what to do. Right? All faces are turning to paleness from shock and fear and and sheer terror, man. Okay? It says, Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. You see, it is the time of Jacob's trouble. And see, you're going to see, man, we've been warning you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to get your life right, man. You're going to have to deal with, with men coming through your door like that. And yet none of your weapons are going to work. You know, and then you're going to call on Jesus and Jesus ain't going to do nothing for you, man. All right. You got to call on the name of Yahweh Shai in faith. Right. But it says, but he shall be saved out of it. The elect, the elect man, woman and child are going to be saved, starting with the elect man. Okay. But uh, I'm going to read this in the NLT because I know we always say like it's going to be the worst time in history. But this literally says that in, in NLT, it says in all history. There has never been such a time of terror. Man, dear Lord, call all y'all by Shemasha. It says, it will be a time of trouble for my people Israel. Yet in the end, they will be saved. And so ultimately, yeah, all Israel is going to be saved in the kingdom of heaven. But this is really talking about the uh, uh, nation of, the, I mean, the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay. That's wild, man. All history. There has never been such a time of terror. That That's a future prophecy. That haven't happened yet. Christians don't talk about that, though. They don't let you know that, that the worst times of your life is coming. They're only speaking about prosperity and how to get your money out your pockets and how you can buy them a new car or a new plane or a new Benz or a new watch. That's all they talk about. 
Daniel 12 and 1, it says, And at that time shall make Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, and that at thy time thy people, at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So this is letting you know, this is confirming what was just read in Jeremiah, right? A time like never was since there was a nation, okay? And I'm going to read that in the NLT too. Man, the Lord is bad. Uh, but it says, uh, everyone that's found in the written book. And who's the ones that are found written in the book of life? Those are the elect of the nation of Israel, right? Apostle Har, Elder Apostle Har, always talks about that. You got to be written in the book of life. If you're not written in the book of, written in the book of life, it's going to be bad for you out here. Right, but uh, in the uh, NLT it says, "At that time, Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation, will arise. Then there will be a time of anguish." Man, let me oh, hold on before I continue that. Let me Google that word anguish. That's a bad word right there. Right, we didn't heard the time of terror, the time of anguish. Anguish says severe mental or physical pain or suffering. Be extremely distressed about something. Severe mental or physical pain or suffering. People can't deal with regular everyday mental and physical pain or suffering. Oh my God, the Lord says severe. Okay, so it says, then there will be a time of great anguish, greater than, excuse me, let's skip now. Then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. You see? So the Lord says, ever since nations first existed, it ain't been a time as bad as this. Oh my. And you, man, it's been some bad times throughout history for all the historians out there, right? When you think about all those great wars, right? You think about uh, 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 World War I, World War II. When you think about ancient wars with swords, when you think about... Uh, all the famines, all the plagues that have been throughout the earth. When you think about slavery, the multiple slaveries, when you think about all this, the Lord says it ain't nothing been as bad as what's coming. Okay. And so where is the comfort and the balance with this? Is that Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah are going to endow his men with power. All right. And so you, you men, you got to pray for, pray for stability, pray for deliverance. And you women, you better cleave on to a man of the Lord. You see, this is Isaiah 40 and 29. It says, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, Yahweh, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So this is the Lord giving his men power, true power, man. All right. Power that's going to change lives, power that's going to devastate the enemy. Right. And we're, we're going to need this. Right. Even when you read the New Testament, it speaks about how they had power to heal. Right. Esau come in there and jack somebody up, but they had they had the power to heal, man. Heal, had power to cast out devils. Okay, let me see. Let me get a, a couple real quick. It says, uh, Luke 9 and 2, and he sent them uh, to preach the kingdom of the Most High and to heal the sick. You see? So a lot of healings are going to be done. That's spiritual power, man. You know, Esau, it, it, that's wild too. Esau come in and cut up your flesh or something. Right. But let's say you didn't feel it. The Lord gave you a spirit where you can. It happened, but you didn't feel it. But then you can heal yourself afterwards. You know, spiritual power. You see. Esau is not going to be able to do nothing about this, man. All right. He he want the power that's coming from the Lord. Esau wish he could put it in a bottle and sell it. But hey, the kingdom of heaven cannot be purchased with money, man. You can't get this unless it's given to you from the most high. And Lord willing, we get it, man. Right? The scriptures talk about how then shall his elect be known. His chosen will be known, man. Right? And how is that going to be known? It's only one way. It, let's, you have to understand that. That's the spiritual breakdown of that. There's only one way to know that you're a part of the Heavenly Father's elect prior to Judgment Day. Right? 
There's only one way. Like, you know, you can have, uh, what's the word? on? You can have hints. You can have dreams. You can have thoughts. You can have strong considerations. You can have prayers and hopes. But at the end of the day, we don't really know unless you get spiritual power or unless you get beamed up. Them are only two sure f for sure ways to know that you're a part of Yahweh Bashim al Shai's elect. Lord willing, we be at that number. And now, do I believe, you know, do I believe certain men absolutely are a part of the elect? But I say yes. You know what I'm saying? Especially the apostles. You know what I mean? But everything is all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. So that's why we got to stay on this path. And do the best we can so that we can try to get saved out of here, man. All right? Do these things and ye shall never fall. You see? So we want to stay on that path. We want, man, and I ain't going to lie, you know, for the, and I'm sure this goes with all brothers, man. Getting spiritual powers is like, man, I don't even know the word to describe it. It's really, uh, you really get speechless when thinking about it, but it's like, a major like prize, a gift, uh, you know, uh, it's a level of comfort to know that Esau is running around with tanks and guns and weaponry and armor like this. And to know that you're going to be defended and protected and kept safe. You see what I'm saying? That That's really an amazing thing that Yahweh Shemir al Shah is going to do. You know, things are going to happen. Animals said the animals are going to be at peace with us. That's a form of spiritual power. All right, let me see. Uh, it was even a scripture about uh. Let me see if I can find it. It was a scripture dealing with uh, I think Apostle Paul or Peter. Let me see. I don't know. It's gonna be harder for me to find, but basically how. It was talking about how he was, uh, he got bit. He got bit by a, a snake or a serpent. Okay, I'm trying to see if I can find it. But he got bit by a snake or a serpent. And the people were like, is he a god? Because his hand didn't swell and he didn't die. You know, it was Apostle Paul or Peter. I'm trying to remember. Hmm. Give me one moment. I want to find, I really want to find that one. I mean, I might have to do this. Let me see. Acts 28. Acts 28. Let me go ahead and get that real quick. Bear with me. You know, because that's the thing, you know, so many times the Lord showed us things in the New Testament, right? Well, spiritual power. Yeah, see, that's the thing. People don't, people, man, spiritual power don't always been here, man. It had always been here. The Lord just waiting until a certain, uh, that's why I couldn't find it says Viper. Um, but the Lord been waiting for a certain opportunities just to make him arise. And it's going to become, you know, where imagine, you know, the Lord willing, we be them, those men, the Lord willing, we all get those spiritual powers. But can you imagine 144,000 men running around with spiritual powers, Right. Healing the healing the the elect, and judging the wicked, man, that's true judgment from Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, until he arrives. Right, Acts twenty eight three. It says, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper, out of the heat and fastened on his hand. Right, and vipers have poison too. It says fastened on his hand, so it bit him and it was on there tight. It says, and when the barbarians saw the venomous beast. Hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the seat, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. So they thought he was about to die. This dude gotta be a murderer to get, to get attacked like this. He had to be doing something wrong. It says, And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. So Paul was chilling. He should just shook it off. It burnt in the fire, and he wasn't even nothing, it didn't even bother him. It says, How be it they looked when he should have swollen? Or falling down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while, just they were just staring at him, <laughs> waiting for something to happen. It would swell up, waiting for him to just die. But it says, and saw no harm come to him. They changed their minds and said that he was a god. You see? <laughs> so that's how people are gonna be hey, our people shall be willing in the day of our power. You see, they're like, damn, this dude, he's gotta be a god, bro. He just got bit by a poisonous snake. 
You know, you know that boy had to look deadly for it wasn't no little snake. Like, you know what I'm saying? They saw him shaking his fire, so they just sitting there watching. It says a long while, so they just staring at him, just waiting for him to drop dead or his hand to swell up. But, you know, he shook it off like it was no big deal. And why did he do this? It's because of faith. He knew that that was just another challenge, but the Lord was going to preserve him and deliver him. And that's the kind of faith we're going to have. You got to, you know, of course, every, we never want to tempt the Lord, but you have to have a certain level of spiritual confidence and a strong expectation that the Lord is going to save you and do all the things that, he, that, are, that are written. You know what I'm saying? That's the, the good favor that comes from, from serving Yahweh Bashim al all right, the confidence, right? This says, uh, you know, fear the Lord is sure, com ever, yeah, ever sure confidence. You know, fear the Lord is as great confidence, roughly paraphrasing, you know? Let me see if I can find that great confidence. Let me see, not the one at, at Maccabees. Let me see how it's wrote. Confidence, I believe it's in... Uh, Proverbs, that's right, Proverbs 14 and 26, it says, in the fear of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yashai, is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge, you see, so the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, man, that, that's, that, that, that make you feel good, right, and his children have a place of refuge, a refuge is a place for safety, all right, so the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and are safe. You know, so, hey, I just wanted to get that out through the spirit. Lord willing, we get them spiritual powers, putting spirit bombs on the wicked, flying, healing, right? Uh, being invisible, running fast, having amazing strength and much more, man. You know, so, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, or Chakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace, mercy to the house of David uh, that are doing this work in sincerity and in truth. Until next time. Shalom.